So today we're going to be talking about 8 of Skybox's most game breaking exploits. I'll save you some time, don't go trying them because they don't work anymore. Now I know as well as anyone how challenging and just utterly painful nucleus runs can be. I'd say besides fishing and maybe floor 4, it's probably my least favourite activity to do in the whole game. Collecting 5 crystals from various depths of the crystal holes to receive a loot bundle, with a chance at getting a Devan's Alloy. Now, there was actually a way to re-roll nucleus runs. Essentially, after placing the last crystal, you could just swap lobbies and place the last crystal again. It's that simple. Or should I say, it was that simple. Now, some exploits happen by chance, but it's clearly obvious that this one doesn't really just occur by chance. I mean, I guess maybe the first time it ever happened, someone figured it out, was by chance. And something else to note is nobody was ever punished for this because we know of recent times. Sometimes exploits result in people being banned, wiped and so on. Now, I can't say this is something that I ever knew about. Don't worry, I'll just stick to my 45 minute nucleus runs. Even with nucleus re-rolling, of course the alloy was still really, really rare to get. Meaning that even this was ridiculously OP. It's not a guaranteed moneymaker. Talking of moneymakers, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of pay to win. So if you are planning on purchasing anything from the Hypixel store, make sure to use code NITROS, it gets yourself 5% off. Also, you should subscribe to the channel, we are in touching distance of 60k, literally less than 100 subscribers away, so you know what to do. Also, you should join the Discord server, we offer Slayers and Dungeon Carries, so if you need carries or want to carry and make some coins, make sure to join. Anyway, on to the next. So, within Dungeons, I'm sure we're all aware, there is an RNG meter for pretty much every item. However, the RNG meter in dungeons doesn't always worked the same. Take for example the Necron's Handle. Filling the meter with 274k XP on floor 7, as it kind of says below, gives you a 100% guarantee to drop a Necron's Handle. Now, when you actually gain more XP towards this, the chances of actually dropping the handle become greater if you have the Necron's Handle selected on the meter. If you don't have it selected, you just get the base chance. If you have this selected and you drop the Necron's handle before the meter, the meter will be reset. However, this never used to be the case, it wouldn't reset. Meaning that basically, you can just get the meter to being very very close to full, meaning that you have a much much higher drop chance for the Necron's handle, or any other item for that reason. Basically what you would do is get the meter all the way to pretty much full and then every time you get just a little bit too close to it being full to a point where it's like one run off you'll just basically select a lower RNG like a recombobulator that will then take 10k XP off the meter and you will still have the rest of the XP towards the meter meaning that you still maintain a really high chance to drop a handle. So it actually gives you a three times higher chance to drop a handle which is crazy. Once again, it's not something that could occur randomly considering you really have to know what you're doing to be able to do this. And no one was ever punished for it because it was an exploit, but at the same time, it was more of just an overlooked game mechanic, but it was still an exploit. Over the past six months, there has been actually quite a few different methods that you're actually able to, let's say, one-tap a Slayer boss. Of course, you still have to take the time to spawn the boss in, which I guess of the overall boss killing time, including spawning the boss, still takes up a pretty big chunk. However, of course, if you're able to one-tap a Slayer boss, this drastically decreases the entire time. In newer methods, the Ragnarok Axe has been very prominent, along with the use of Crimson Armor. With one-tapping Voiglooms, it's kind of hard to keep up with if I'm being completely honest. It seems like a method always appears, it gets patched, and then a new very, very similar but slightly different one comes up just after. Nevertheless, it makes sense why people do it, considering the bosses are considerably faster, meaning that they've got more chance of getting the RNG drops they want. Of course, it's very hard to do this unintentionally, you've got to know what you're doing once again to be able to one-tap a Slayer boss. Um, and also, yeah, it is once again just more of taking advantage of a game mechanic that probably isn't meant to be. Um, but yeah, crazy. Now, Diamond Essence has been in the game for quite a long time. Well. I can't remember it not being in the game. However, the Diamond's Essence Shop, on the other hand, is a very new addition. Um, probably, I think within the last month it was introduced with the changes to the Crystal Nucleus, which make it much better. Anyway, there's one specific perk in this shop that was really bugged at the start when the update first came out. And that was the Radiant Fisher perk. Increases your chances of fishing up a Diamond Trophy fish in the Crimson Isles by 2%. Now for some reason, when upgraded to the max, instead of giving you an extra 20% chance of fishing up a diamond trophy fish, it was actually 20 times. 
for about an hour after the update released. So, <laughs> anyone uh, fishing for diamond trophy fish at that point in time were very lucky. And of course, when um, when if there was anyone actually fishing at that point in time and they, they benefited from it, to be honest, the majority of the people probably didn't realise because it's not like the shop told you you were getting 20 times. It, it still said 20%. It was just calculated completely wrong. So, um, I guess at the time, a lot of people probably just thought they were getting ridiculously lucky. Now, the next exploit comes from something a little bit... I don't know. Something that maybe you wouldn't think would be involved in an exploit. Okay, so... It's the Thunderbolt enchantment. Strikes monsters within two blocks with lining every three consecutive hits, dealing 25% of your damage. That's Thunderbolt 6. Now, the exploit that I'm going to explain actually works with Thunderlord 2. And Thunderlord strikes a monster with lining every three consecutive hits, dealing 60% more damage. So, to cut a long story short, first of all, you need to get the mob down to less than 500 HP. And then it would just simply give you two times the loot, which is. Pretty OP. Of course, the reason you stop at 500 is let the Thunderlord or Thunderbolt do its thing. It's one of those where it's probably not gonna really. I mean, it may happen, you know, very rarely, randomly, but majority of the time it, it would be people knowing what they're doing and then basically profiting from it. Um, but yeah, very interesting. I never knew that. Well, to be honest, I was just thinking both of those enchantments are pretty useless. Next up, we have Rod Swapping for Fishing, giving you 1.5 times fishing stats. Now, I can't say I'm a big fisher myself. Similar to sword swapping, there's many, many, many different methods. For example, using hotkeys to swap the second rod to the inventory crafting grid, and then back into the other rod slot. Quite obviously, this is something that's gonna have to be kind of articulated and not really something that happens randomly. 1.5 times fishing stats, boy. Now, another exploit could be the slime hack, giving you permanent anti-knockback. Uh, there was many different ways that this worked, but one of them was swapping lobbies, um, changing the helmet, and then being walked back into the same lobby. Once again, this is another situation where if you are benefiting from anti not back on the slime high, it's something that you very much try to do. And for the last exploit in this video, we move on to the only exploit in this video where people have actually been banned or been punished. And this is something that I've talked about recently, just a few days ago with people benefiting from increased drop rates for vertexes from infernal minions. Now, the way that this actually happened for some people was just complete and utter accident. Other people knew what they were doing and definitely exploited it though. Pretend this is an infernal minion. Now, to actually be able to drop vertexes and apexes, of course you need to fuel those minions. And essentially all the exploit was is you would fuel the minion and then leave the island for 18 hours or longer. And this would increase your chances to drop a vertex by 1.5 times, or 50%. Basically meaning that if you have 31 tier 5 minions placed, instead of the expected 23 vertexes, you would be expected to get 31, which is 1 per minion in 18 hours. Here's the thing, like I said, some people definitely exploited it. Um, fair enough, you know, you're not supposed to do that. However, it's entirely possible and believable that there are probably were a ton of people who maybe have never, either they didn't know about this, this glitch or this exploit, and they just simply fueled the minions and went offline and came back on. I mean, is, is that too ridiculous? I don't think it is. I think that's quite common. I mean, 100%. There's 100% period of, periods of times where I don't check on my minions or go to my island in 18 hours. Maybe not even log on to Skyblock. But people still got punished for it, and that's the crazy part. I'm not going to go too much into anything else to do with this exploit in this video. If you want to go ahead and check out my video from a couple of days ago, I'll go a little bit more in depth. But yeah, very, very, very simple exploit. Um, but I guess, effective. Anyway, that's just about all we've got time for in this video. Let me know if there's any exploits in this video that I went through that you weren't aware of. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.